Welcome to another Node-RED video on my channel and today I'm going to talk about context and specifically how you can use persistent context. So persistent context is all about the values that you store in your Node-RED flow. So if you go to context, so these are your global and the flow and the node values. And if you want to keep them between Node-RED restarts or you know your Raspberry Pi restarting, you can now use persistent con uh, context. Back in the early days, it wasn't possible and you had to create your own processes in order to save your context values in, for example, into files. And actually, I did a video on that probably like two, two and a half years ago. So I've implemented my own method, but now it's all available in the standard. Also, what has also recently changed, and I'm not really sure from which version number, that in the past when you had node variables like this one, and if you would change the code on this function node, or if you just move it around, move it to a different tab and redeploy it, these values would get lost. And that's no longer happening as well, but I can't really tell from which version, but that's also a change in the behavior. But definitely, if you are restarting Node-RED, all your values are going to be lost but not anymore because now we have some new options. If you Google Node-RED context, you will find this uh, article on uh, node-red.org, which talks about the various context scopes. So, you know, the node and the flow and the global variables and how to use them. And I've used these extensively in all of my examples. So you, so you are probably aware of these. But what is recent to uh, maybe it's, you know, 0.19 release is now we also have the option to define different context storage options. So in the past, we only stored context in the memory, but now it is possible to define various modules. What I personally find useful that you can uh, define multiple context stores. So I'm actually using this example, which is mentioned here. So I define two uh, context stores. One is a memory only, which stores the values in memory. So this is how it worked in the past as well. But you also have the option to file, which uses the module local file system. So that will automatically save your context variables to the file system and then it would automatically restore it when you restart Node-RED. So you don't have to do anything, no extra coding is required. The only thing that you need is you need to specify this one in your settings.js file and also when you are using uh, creating a context variable or retrieving a context variable, you have to specify that you want to use this uh, file a storage module. So first of all, let's tackle the settings.js part. So on my particular example, I have the uh, Node-RED installed on my Raspberry Pi. So for me, the settings.js is in the slash home slash pi slash dot Node-RED and uh, slash settings.js path. And I had a very old version of the settings.js uh, from a period where context storage wasn't part of the settings. So I had to edit manually. I added it to the end of the settings.js. If you have a newer version of Node-RED, you might have this uh, context storage somewhere in your settings.js already included by just comment it out. So either find the existing one or you can just add it to the end of your settings.js. And if you are adding it to the end of the, the settings.js, don't forget to add a comma at the end of the last curly bracket. Well, not the last one, but the one before just to make sure that your, you know, your settings.js is a proper JS file. So here, as I said, I'm specifying that I want a memory only storage and a file storage using these modules, but I would use the memory only as the default one. So if you have done that, you save your new settings.js. Of course, you restart your Node-RED in order for these changes to take effect. And when you do that, you're not going to see a lot of change. Maybe the first one that you would notice that if you come to the, you know, the context data, now it is actually going to show you where the context data is stored. So it is going to show you for, you know, for, for the flow and node and the global as well. I have most of my stuff stored in memory only. So let's see on an example how it looks like. So let me create an inject node and I'm going to create a, a payload. For start, I'm going to use change node. So let's say that I want to create a flow variable, which is called the data. And into that flow variable, I'm going to put in the payload, whatever comes in a payload. Okay. And let me copy this one as well. And this time it's going to be word. And now 
what I'm going to do here is again another change that you see because you have uh, defined multiple storage options now you have this icon here and you can select whether you want to do the memory only which is the default but in this case we want to do a file so now we can select the file and then say done so this flow is going to create a flow variable in the memory and this flow is going to save the data in the file system and what we can also do is we can create another inject node and just we are going to retrieve these values so change so the payload is now going to be the flow data and we also connect the debug oops and we are done so let's see what happens now if i trigger the first inject node and if i refresh my flow we are going to see that now we have a data object or the data context which has the uh, value hello and it is stored in the memory only and if i trigger the second one what we are going to see that again we have a second data object which is stored in a file and it has a separate value so when you are using the different context methods it in fact links to a separate context uh, i think probably object is the right word so you can use the same context id for example data in here and then you can have one which is stored in a memory and the other one which is stored in a file so this is why you really have to make sure that you are getting you know storing the data where you want to and also getting the data from the same place where you stored it otherwise you might get an undefined data or you might get different data for example in this case one would be hello the other one would be word so if i look at my other example if i trigger this inject node then i can see that i get the hello back this is because i haven't specified here which context storage i want to use well i haven't specified but the default is memory only so i got the memory only version back of data which was hello but if i change this to file and if i redeploy and if i trigger it again now we are getting the payload back which says word so here on the change node you can specify both when you are setting a context variable and as i said it can be global flow as well so you want you are defining here where you want to store it or where you want to retrieve the form and as i said it makes sense that you specify it in both places and pretty much the same applies to a function node as well when you are trying to do the same using javascript code so here in this uh, quite large code I have a place when I'm setting a context variable. So of course it says like context.set and the name of the variable, the value of the variable. And because I haven't specified anything here, it's going to be in the memory context. So if I refresh this node, you are going to see that the uptime is in the memory only. If I want to store it in a file, I just have to add another parameter where I specify the option that I set here so it's this is why it says file and now this context is going to get saved in a file so if I do this one now I get a second uptime which is going to be in the file and I can do this same for the other one as well and if I want to retrieve this data I have to specify it on the context.get line as well so I have to add another parameter which says you know context.get the name of the variable and then file well in this case it's going to be file and this works exactly the same way if you are using flow or global instead of context flow.get and let's say file or global.get and file and of course the same with set as well so if you are planning to move some of your context variables from the memory to the file especially if you already have some values created just make sure that you are updating both the get and the set as well and of course you know make sure that you are updating it in all the places within your code otherwise you would be storing the same values both in memory and also in the file or maybe what you can do is if you are migrating these values maybe you can just delete the ones that you are not using anymore because this is also an option that has been included in node red some time now so if you hover over your context values you have a trash can icon and you can delete them manually so that would be my short video about how you can configure persistent context in Node-RED. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.